Good morning guys, what's up? Today we're going to be looking at how to manage a sucking chest wound which has caused a traumatic pneumothorax. Now in our last video we went through the pathophysiology and causes of pneumothoraces. We had a look at this little model here to demonstrate and I recommend going back and checking out that video before proceeding with this video if you haven't seen it yet. In that video we summarised the causes, the pathophysiology and the clinical signs of a pneumothorax. Now, there's a whole bunch of signs, but if you suspect a thoracic injury of any kind, I like to think of a little triad, and that is tachypnea, tachycardia, and chest pain. It's simple. Now, as a quick summary, pneumothorax occurs when a buildup of air accumulates inside the pleural cavity. In this little pneumothorax model, we've got the lung, we've got the pleural cavity, we've got a sucking chest wound here, and this is the diaphragm. Now, when we seek to expand that diaphragm, the lung does not expand with it. That's because air is getting sucked into the pleural cavity through the sucking chest wound because it's lower resistance than expanding the whole lungs. So aside from providing high flow oxygenation and supporting the ventilation, we want to occlude that sucking chest wound. Now, there's a whole range of types of chest seals. The best evidence suggests that vented chest seals are superior to non-vented or improvised chest seals. So let's just have a little look at what happens if we do occlude that sucking chest wound here. This is an improvised chest seal. It's an electrical tape. So here we are with the chest wound open and no expansion of the lung is occurring. And here we are occluding that chest wound and we have expansion of that lung very nicely. So here I've got one thorax and another thorax. I don't have a mannequin. Um, and I've got a vented chest seal by North American Rescue. And I've got... And I've got another chest seal by a random shop online, a brand which does not have medical approval in any country that I know. So I thought this could be an opportunity to compare these two chest seals and see how they match up against each other on these two fake thoraxes. 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 Tension pneumothoraces. Okay, so first things first when managing someone with a sucking chest wound is that you want to get yourself and the patient away from the danger which caused that chest wound in the first place. Whatever that may be. And then you want to make sure that you're wearing gloves to protect yourself from body fluids which are going to be leaking out of that chest wound. You want to clean all the area around that chest wound with a gauze or a towel, whatever you've got, just to dry that surface so that the adhesive will stick to the skin. You also want to get rid of any dirt or grime which may cause the adhesive to stick to that rather than to the skin. And lastly, whether the patient's too fine or prone, doesn't matter, however they're sitting, you want to roll them or turn them so you can look at the other side, whether it's their back or the front, so you can check whether there's any other wounds, potentially an exit wound, if the patient has been shot. Okay, so the surface is clean. It's ready for application of the chest seal. Next, you want to open the chest seal as such. Take it out, open it up, and you want to pull the red tab to remove the clear film from the surface of the dressing. Now, you can see in this particular one here, it actually has gauze included. And you can see that it's vented. So this is where you want to center the chest wound. So let's just say this safe style shield right here is the chest wound and we're going to be centering the dressing on that shield or on the wound. Next, we want to press around all of the dressing to make sure that it's tightly and nicely sealed. And there you have it. As you can see, the adhesive is strong. It's, it's like a DFI pad. It's really, really sticky, really good. And there's no adhesive where these vents are and where this centerpiece is. So that means when the diaphragm expands, causing negative pressure within the thorax, that's going to suck this dressing into the wound, occluding it so that no air can travel inside the pleural space. Okay, so that's how the high fin chest seal works. Let's have a look at this other one. Enos Run Medical, that's the brand. If you know something about them, if I'm completely wrong about them, please correct me, but I haven't seen them approved anywhere and they're not ARTG approved, as far as I know. So, open the packet. It's actually a bit difficult to open. You compare the high fin vent, that just tore in a straight line, really easy. This one sort of tore off to the edge, really awkward to kind of expand that to get the rest of it out. And here we have it, it looks pretty similar. There is no red tab to pull, but it's still got the same sort of film there. This one actually has vents not traveling all the way to the edge of the dressing, but just a little way, and then a hole to burp air out of the dressing. Yes, anyway. Okay, that's really stuck to that. Great. <laughs> this is not what you want to happen on a uh, actual emergency case. Anyway, kind of pull it apart. It's stuck to itself. It's stuck to my fingers. This is folded over the edge here, so there's no way I'm going to be able to unstick that. This is a mess already, and we haven't even got it on, and my fingers are sticky as. All right, so this is this is the thorax. Um, excuse the candid, honest expressions here, but this is what I'm experiencing here. 
Um, this patient's rolling all over the place. I'm gonna have to support them with another patient there who's recovered. And we're gonna apply this. There we go, cool. All right, so that's stuck on. Obviously that edge there is never gonna stick on and that could be a problem. Um, but it's stuck on, it's fairly sticky, I guess. It's kind of hard to pull off. If you compare it with this one here, yeah, it's pretty similar in terms of its adhesive. The thing I'm interested in is how these vents would perform compared to these vents, which travel all the way to the edge of the dressing. Now, I'm not very familiar with other chest seals, such as the SAM chest seal and some of the other ones out there, but I'd be interested to know if this is an effective design. If you guys have any experience or any knowledge on this subject, please let me know. I'm interested to find out. Now guys, if you're involved in high risk activities such as tactical response, motocross, or if you're an arborist, I highly recommend that you carry a first aid kit with equipment required to manage such an injury. So by way of example, we supply a first aid kit which includes the high fin vented chest seal that we just saw demonstrated. It also includes a rapid stop tourniquet, a pressure dressing, and a few other bits and pieces which are designed to save your life. Now on a serious note guys, remember this is a medical emergency. Patients are going to require high flow oxygenation and they may require detention. If you have anything to add to this video or if you have any suggestions for future videos, please let me know in the comments. Do subscribe, make sure that you click the bell for notifications, including notifications for every video. And we'll see you next time.